Hi there everyone, back at the Royal Society with Keith, head librarian, and you know what I like most of all? Boxes. Look at these ones, Keith. We've got two boxes. They're pretty nice boxes too, aren't they? I always think the small present is usually the best present, so oh, I always okay. open the big one first. Go for it. Here we go. We have a golden egg. Keith, what is this? It's a, what, what interesting instrument have we got today? Well, we're going to look at hydrometers today, and there's a very particular reason for this, is because the Royal Society in the early 19th century had something called an excise committee. So the Royal Society was consulted by the government who were interested in taxing spiritus liquors and beers and things like that. Okay. So they had a, a beauty parade, if you like, for the most accurate and the most practical instrument for uh, determining the specific gravity of, of liquids. So they were interested in the alcohol content because more alcohol, more tax they could raise. Um, initially on spirits, but then moving into other areas, wines, beers, and so on. Okay, so here we go. The Royal Society commissioned to come up with perhaps some kind of instrument for measuring density and therefore the contents of alcoholic drinks. Have this competition, and I'm guessing I know what's in here. It's another hydrometer. Do I take it these ones were therefore the winners? Is this the winning instrument? Yeah, in, in a manner of speaking, yes. The winning instrument was designed by actually an excise officer. So Benjamin Sykes got the prize, if you like, uh, and then he died. Now, Sykes's wife realised that this was a money spinner and she managed to get the contract from the government to manufacture instruments like this. It turned out that um, Sykes's son-in-law, a man called Bait, uh, got the job. He had a, a, a little workshop in Pultry, which is uh, not far from the Bank of England. And um, they proceeded, therefore, to churn out these instruments. So these excise officers, these alcohol tax people yeah. all around mm. Britain would have been using these and, and dipping these and floating these in the alcoholic drinks. That's right. So they'd need an instrument uh, and they'd need a set of tables as well to work out, once they'd made the measurement, uh, what the alcohol content of the drink was. I feel like this is the snitch from Harry Potter and I'm catching it. It's quite a beautiful thing, isn't it? It's, it's really nicely made and you'd, you'd simply float it in and read off the position from the scale just here. It's a really light, it's like a hollow egg it feels like. You float this in the liquid and from what I read, where the liquid is on the scale tells you the specific gravity, kind of like the density mm -hmm. of the liquid and from the density of the liquid they can tell things like how much sugar's in it and things like that. Yeah. So. And we have little weights here as well. So there's a hole in the bottom there, which presumably we can attach a weight. Yeah. Oh, look. That's it. Fits like a glove. You just don't get stuff made like that anymore. What a beautiful fit. Can we try this one, Keith? Yeah, I, I think you'd be very surprised at how light that is, Brady. Do you know, after you said that, I'm now surprised by how heavy it is. <laughs> but the funny thing is, this part, the egg, is yes. very light, it, very that, hollow. That's right, yeah. But this bulbous bit on the end here that, is that's very... That's your weight, yes. Yeah, that's that's your the, weight. the weight on the end is very dense. But again, this egg at the top, hollow, very delicate. I think you simply weighted from the top in this case. So ah. you have a, a little selection of weights here that you can okay. add on to the top okay. there. We just add the appropriate weight. Even right down to very fine degrees of measurement. So these little ivory containers here contain grains. Look at that. So as this is floating in the liquid, you can fine tune the weight that's attached to the top to such a degree, it could be a big clumsy old one like this that you just put on the top, or you could use one of those ones that Keith's holding mm -hmm. with these tiny little grains inside, a little tiny flecks of metal almost, to just, just to fine tune the weight. Just to make minor adjustments, yeah, yeah. So we're talking super accurate here. Yeah. Amazing. So you would need your tables, of course, to be able to interpret. Look at the front there. Yeah. Sykes Hydrometer. Let me just turn to the title page here. So Sykes's tables are of the concentrated strength of spirits, with directions for the use of his hydrometer, established throughout the United Kingdom for estimating the duties on spiritus liquors by Act of Parliament. So it gives the Act of Parliament there. But well, you've got your tables there. There we go. Uh, how to read them at different temperatures, of course, because if you're looking at alcohol solutions, the temperature is, is pretty important. And they're using Fahrenheit's thermometer. So when you're measuring your liquid, you look up its temperature, you know what weights to be putting on it and all things like that. And what have we got over here, Keith? Okay. 
So these are some of the papers of the Royal Society's Excise Committee. And a lot of this is, is tabular as well, but also it gives the proceedings there. Oh, look who was on the committee. Exactly right. Yes, this chap called Faraday was on the judging panel in the 1830s. So this is a, a later assessment of the quality of Bates's craftsmanship. They kept rechecking it to make sure the hydrometers were good. And in this case, yeah, Michael Faraday is the one doing the, the hard work. Here we go. Lots of equations and notes. But here you can see exactly what you were playing with there. There we go. The portion of this instrument submerged in the liquid under examination is constant, this effect being produced by the addition of weights in the cup. And when the brass weight of 300 grains is placed upon the cup, the instrument sinks in distilled water of the temperature 62 degrees Fahrenheit to the point D, which is marked upon the upper stem. More drawings. That's almost a scale as well. Look at that. Mm. And there's a little weight that goes in at the bottom. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, here we go. Directions for use of Sykes hydrometer for ascertaining the strength of spiritus liquors. First, immerse the thermometer, stir the sample. So obviously you need to find out what the temperature is. Immerse the hydrometer, press it downwards till the whole divided part of the stem be wet. Observe the force required to sink it as a guide in selecting the proper weight. And slip that weight on the bottom of the hydrometer. Again, immerse it. See if the hole be free from air bubbles and pressing the instrument down as before to division O, let it slowly rise to the resting point. So this is clearly instructions for one of these ones because it's mm. got a weight on the bottom. That's right. And then after you've got your measurement, it tells you how to then use the table to find out exactly what your specific gravity is. Before we go for a drink, we now know that if we want to decide the specific gravity of the liquid, mm -hmm. we've got the instruments, we've got the instructions, We've got the approval of Michael Faraday. We've got everything. I think we're ready to go. Cheers, everyone. So this is a James Short made telescope. Yep. So this is the real thing. This is no illustration. This is an instrument that was made for the Royal Society. And this would have been for the 1761 transit of Venus. So it's the first of that pairing.